Hi everybody, Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art here, and we're painting a big project tonight. I know you guys have all joined me to paint some ceramics lately, and I'm kind of wanting to get back to painting some of my wooden signs, and this one is really fun. It's gonna be a snowman. Hi, Patty, thanks for watching. Um, and he's not just Christmassy, he's wintry, so you could use him, uh, put him out on your porch all winter. This is a five foot tall by nine inch wooden sign. And it's nicely made because my wood guy puts these braces on the back to keep the board from warping. So it's really nicely made, nice pine. We're gonna paint the snowman. And I'm gonna jump right in and start painting. And then as we're going along, I can explain everything um, that I'm doing. I'm gonna try to watch the comments, so uh, just Post some questions if you have them. I'll try to answer them as we go along, but if not, I will answer them afterwards. So let me just get started. It's kind of big, so it's awkward. So I'm going to see you in a minute. I'm going to be painting. So I did a little prep work. You might have pop see, you might have catch, you might have catched me when I popped in this afternoon. I just painted the whole board dark gray. And while the gray was wet, I just put on the bottom circle, the middle circle, and the little head of the snowman just roughly. You can see it's very gray. I used the white right on top of the gray. I just used one of these big chip brushes, two inch brush. Um, you guys have seen me use these. They're cheap as can be, but they're great for lots of jobs when you're painting. So I really wanted to keep some gray in this snowman. We're gonna do, go, do a little white on top of him now, but um, I still want him to be kind of gray because when we paint some snowflakes on him later, they will really show up. We're also going to stencil uh, some, some wording down here. We're going to paint some birch trees and some birds. And this piece really doesn't need to be traced on. You can pretty much eyeball it. I will um, show you that. These guys are just, look, I just have a little curved brush strokes here for his middle and a little oval head. Pretty easy. I'm sure you could do it. So let me start. I'm going to just go ahead and get some white, a little more white on his body so that will dry while we work on the details, because when this is dry towards the end, we're gonna put that stencil on that says, baby, it's cold outside. So I am just using white acrylic paint. This is could be a tubed paint. It could be just the um, bottles you find at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and the craft stores, um, Ocean State Job Lot even. Why I like these chip brushes so much is they're kind of scraggly. Can you see my brush strokes there? I kind of like that look. I don't want a perfect finish. I want it to be a little rough looking, a little vintagey looking. Keeping this gray here. And getting just a little bit brighter on that. And so when you do start this project, you're gonna paint your board gray, like I said. You're gonna go on with your first coat of white for the snowman's body while the gray's wet. Then give it a good I don't know, maybe a half an hour or so to dry. I like to have this part really dry when I'm starting now. And because of that is how is why you're seeing these brush strokes. It looks a little rough hewn. It looks kind of old. That's because the paint underneath is dry. If that was wet, you'd get a different look altogether. But I like this kind of um, rough look. And because the paint is pretty thin, it's going to dry fairly fast. I'm going to try to, um, well, I will show you the pictures. You will see this as we go. I was going to show you a picture of it done, but I'm going to let you kind of see the process here. This video, you're watching it live, and thank you guys. Let me know if you're here watching. Say hello. Let me know where you're watching from, and it'll be fun to see where everybody's from. But watching it live, so I'm going to kind of work, uh, I'm going to go along a little fast, but remember... You can watch this video anytime. It's gonna be up on my page. You can start it, stop it when you need to, and take your time, gather some friends, all get together to paint. It's not that you have to catch up with me now. I just wanted to pop on, because I miss painting with my people. So, um, thanks for, for, for being here. And, okay, Snowman, I've got him pretty white. I'm gonna leave him like that now. I wanna give him a hat, and I wanna give him some birch trees behind. I think I'll go ahead and paint his hat next because I'm doing this in a way that you don't really need to trace the design on. So if we do his hat next, then on top of his hat behind him, we're going to put the birch trees. So I think I'm going to go for green with his hat. 
Not a lot of brushes are needed with this project either. So you've got the chip brush I've been using. Now I just have a flat. This is probably a 12. Whatever you have might work. But I'm going to go ahead with my green paint now. And I'm going to just eyeball the, um, the hat. I'm going to just get a curved line here. Down. Down. It's really not fancy. I am not worrying about being perfect. It's about the process. It's about having fun. It's not about making something exactly perfect. Just kind of go by your shapes. This is sort of a little bit of a curved rectangle. The little brim of the hat is just another curve. Connect it to his head. I'm going to bring it down on his forehead a little bit so it sort of sits on his head. Actually, he's looking a little like a leprechaun now with his green hat. But, and with the acrylic paints, as you can see, the first coat sometimes is pretty see-through. I just let it dry, put a second coat. We'll shade him a little bit, but at least we know where his hat is. So that's his hat. I'm just going to rinse my brush off in between. If I am going from one color to a darker color, I don't generally rinse my brush off. I would just dry it on a paper towel. But since we're going to go in with some white now for the birch trees, I am going to rinse that off. And the only thing I, I would, a little bit of advice is just to dry that brush off really well before you go back into your paint. If your brush has some water in it, your acrylic paint's going to be even thinner and it might run and it really isn't going to be as much fun if you have to worry about that. All right, so you can see, I know it's a big project so it's hard to see, but we've got the base coat for his hat on. I'm going to take my white paint again and I'm going to just add some birch trees. You guys can see me way up there, right? I'm just going to give myself a couple of lines. You can see, yeah, way down there. These birch trees, I'm going to do a few coats because I really want them to be a brighter white than my snowman. What I'm doing now is just outlining. I'm going to fill them in. I've got this nice flat brush to, to work with, so it'll be very easy to fill those in. This guy's going to come here. All right. So with your flat brush, just fill in your birch trees. Everybody getting ready for Thanksgiving? I figured I would come on and do this tonight because tomorrow night everyone will be busy with their cooking and their baking and whatnot. I know it's a little bit of a different Thanksgiving this year, but it's still going to be turkey and the fixins, and we can all get together by Zoom. What, anybody have um, Zoom plans for Thursday? I know we'll probably get together and a lot of family in Florida, so we will see them via the computer. I'm wishing I could put some Christmas music on for you. That would get everybody in the spirit. Maybe you could put some on where you are. If I put it on, Facebook is not happy with royalty and licensing issues so they sometimes will take the videos down if they have music in them so I'm going to have to paint in the silence and I promise I will not sing because that would not be good and you would not want to listen to that so again acrylic paints I'm using are just the craft paints you can find anywhere they can be the tube paints they can be the bottles this particular project doesn't use many colors either. So what I thought I would do, if anyone is interested, I do have, my wood guy made me 10 of these boards. So I have 10 more of these. Like I said, they're five feet by eight. And I am going to put together some kits. So I will, if you need paint brushes and all that, and you want to give this a try, the video's here to watch. I have the boards, of put in the brushes and the colors that you need. So you could paint your very own snowman. I have 10 of those kits. They're going to be 65. That includes everything you need to paint this guy. I will deliver that to you. Pretty much um, local area because these guys would not ship well. Although if you are not local, you could go to your Lowe's or your Home Depot. They will cut you a piece of wood. But they also have, um, I think, five and six foot boards ready to be purchased there. They run about 
well, the price of wood lately is pretty high. I forget, they're probably running about $20, $20 now, maybe. I haven't bought them in a little while, but I know lumber has really gone up. So you can see what I'm doing here, right? I'm just giving you, looks a little stripy, but these are going to be our birch trees. This one shows up just a little bit behind his hat. Can you see how you don't need to really trace this on? These are sort of free-handed. He's going to be a fun little project and um, and kind of whimsical. You don't need to worry about him being perfect. So, oh, if anyone's interested in one of these kits, just in the comments, mark, uh, just write sold and give me your email address. And then I can invoice you, get your address, deliver this to you. And just a little bit of the tree shows up behind him, but can you see how it's a brighter white? And even maybe with a second coat, that'll really stand out afterwards. So I'm just kind of bringing my tree down a little bit. This guy barely will show this tree. It probably is right here. Although with his scarf after, we probably won't see it. Now I'm kind of waiting for this green to dry. I'm keeping my eye on it. As soon as it is dry, I will just put a second coat of that green. So let's let our, give our um, trees a bit to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and put a scarf on. I try to jump around a little bit on the, on the, paint, on the painting when I'm on the wood like this because just giving the other spots some, some time to dry. Then I can go back in and shade him and whatnot. I think I'm going to use a red scarf. I am going kind of Christmassy colors. I was desperate to paint the hat in a teal because I love the teal. But I thought, let me do a traditional and I can always do a teal one later for myself. Again, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Everybody's busy this week, I know. I might, I probably should have left that little area without any color there at all, because we really don't need the white there. It's just gonna be in the way because it's wet. But we'll just do this for the time being. I am going to just take this, because I'm gonna make my little knot on that side with the little tail of the scarf. So let's just do this. Let's kind of make a knot. Let's see. Hi, Susan. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi the other Kim. You guys must be crafting. Kim, you must be getting ready for your wreath class, too. I hope you can use all those bits and bobs from the from my craft closet because it was so nice. I've been cleaning out my basement and purging. It's been nice. There we go. Green and red. Any colors that you guys would like to do? What are you thinking for yours? Could go uh, navy blue. Oh, you know what would be really fun? Is maybe like a Uncle Sam snowman. You could do red, white, and blue. You could do, oh gosh, stocking cap. That'd be fun. I'm sort of doing more traditional today. I'm going to try to get my eye up on there to see what comments there might be that you might want answered. It's just a weird angle. Hi, Sherry. Hey, Susan. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, you can watch this anytime again later. If you want to paint your own snowman. It's been kind of a busy time of year, so I appreciate you taking your time out of your baking and prepping and whatnot. All right, this is just about dry. Let's go ahead over that. Can you believe that the holidays are so close? I know I was chit-chatting about that when we were painting the Christmas trees, but really, December 1st, I can't believe it's coming right along. Christmas time. Chris, I've, done my, I've started my shopping. That's very unlike me. You guys all know probably that I have the uh, Tinker's Cart, the Irish shop over in Worcester, too. So we have seen a lot of people in doing their shopping, which is kind of nice. We do a lot of, on our website, so we get orders there. And I've been doing my shopping. If you have a chance to get out to the market in Worcester, it's really a great one-stop shopping place. We have a lot of little unique 
shops. It's not really busy. They're all small businesses, so you are supporting all small, locally, lots of women-owned businesses really in there as well. Fabulous food. We have Net Crompton Collective right next door, which has the fabulous um, vintage shop with all the little individual stores, as well as Seed to Stem, which is an amazing plant and gift shop. Bedlam Books. I mean, you don't find bookstores anymore, and this one is fabulous. They all, you know, hand pick and curate their collection. Some really unusual, cool, one of a kind gifts that you can find there. Burnt Tree Bread, as well as all the restaurants we have in our place, is right next door. If the whole COVID thing didn't hit, uh, Crompton was putting a wine garden out in the back garden there, which is a gorgeous little garden. So hopefully things will turn around next year and maybe we'll have that to look forward to. What I do now is I've got a lot of the base colors on. I'm just sort of looking around and if something needs a second coat, there it is. I'm going to add that. And alrighty, so he's coming along pretty fast. He gets a nose, orange nose. He gets some buttons with the black in his little face. But I'm going to let some of that dry. What I'm, oh, and he's going to get a lot of little cardinals sitting here and there. It's so adorable. You could also substitute cardinals. I do cardinals with my winter paintings. Actually, the birch tree with the cardinal is one of my most popular canvas paintings, which a lot of you guys probably have painted with me. So that's why I wanted to do some birch trees and cardinals here. But you could make them little robins or blue, 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 blue birds. Um, you could really customize this any way you want. I'm going to put stripes on my scarf. You could put polka dots. You could put little snowflakes. You could write a name on the hat. There's so many ways to personalize these pieces. So uh, keep that in mind if you want to paint one. You could certainly change it up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to put a little bit more white on my birch trees. I do want those to be uh, to stand out. I'm not worrying about every little bit. As you can see, I'm just sort of giving it a little bit of a second coat here and there. Then we're going to put those little black things, which I still don't know the name of that, those little black bits in the bark. Does anyone know the name of what those are called? I believe someone at class one night did know that. That would be a good trivia question. So there, just a quick second coat. Anyone um, watching order some of the ceramics or paint some of the ceramic trees or the truck and tree? Those pieces had them going out the door left and right. I actually sold out of every piece. But just today, the, 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 the ceramic truck came and gave me a del delivered some more pieces to me. So if you have ordered something and have not received it yet, it's probably in my kitchen. I will pack up the orders tomorrow and get those delivered and shipped. If you're interested and have not seen these pieces, take a look on the page. If you scroll down, you will see some videos of me painting some of them. And even better is some uh, photos of some of the finished pieces. People have been doing amazing things. We've got rainbow trees. We've got teal trees. We've got Irish trees. Uh, you wouldn't think you could personalize those trees so much, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. And a new piece that came in that actually I need to share my cousin Susan's photo. She did the little woody wagon the other day and put the little ceramic camper with it. Oh my god, it's adorable. So you guys who have had the woody wagon or the truck, you might want to keep an eye out for the camper I'm going to paint up and put a picture up. But actually, I'll, I'll show you Sue's too. Hers came out great. Hi, Annette. Hey, Sharon. How are you? It was fun when we painted up to your place in New Hampshire. We'll have to get up there again next year. That would be fun. Thank you guys all for watching. Okay, now for the little lines that are in on the birch tree, I do a couple of things. Just black paint again. I, and I've used this little, this flat number 12 brush this whole time. And, and I think that you can kind of see, I, I will move this around after and give you some close up shots of this. That way you can, um, if you're watching this video later to paint, you can take a screenshot maybe of it, or I can take some photos of individual parts of this guy when he's done. So if you want to follow along next time, just play the video at your leisure. You can. So I've got black paint on my brush. I'm going to take a little off. I don't want to have too, too much. And I'm just with my flat 
end of the brush to the outside of the tree. I'm just, can you see that? Just kind of pulling the paint in a little bit. I'm just going to do that here and there. And I know that's far away. I wonder if I can hold that up at all so you can see a little better what I'm doing here. So the flat end of the brush at the outside of the tree and I just pull it in and you get that really feathered look, which is what I'm after. That's the look I'm after. I am not, again, fussing with it, being super careful, worrying about it, complaining that I don't like it, doesn't look like this one or that one. That's what I'd love to get across to you guys, especially on paint nights. Please don't compare your work with your neighbors or with me or with something you see online. Everybody paints a little differently. There's no right or wrong way. And the process is the important part. Are you having fun? Do you like to create? That's what's important. Not, oh, it looks perfect when it's done because nothing looks perfect. It's personality. It's enjoyment. It's fun. If you get together with your family by Zoom or Facebook group, and paint together. I have a lot of that. I had some pictures. Julie, I don't know if Julie's watching. Julie and her girlfriends got together and painted trees and she sent me a picture. It was so funny. There I am on the big jumbotron painting and they're all following along and at the same time I was painting with another group. So really you got to get creative these days and I think what a lot of us need is just some projects and some creativity. Keeps us uh, sane these days where it's Getting dark at 4.30. I can't stand that. I don't know. It just seems so early to be dark. So now you can see all I did was with my flat brush pull those lines in. In addition to that, I'm just going to take my brush on the chisel end now. And I can even show that to you on my little palette. So, so on the chisel end, I'm just going to bring, make some lines. Before we were just using the flat end this way. But now I'm just going to use the chisel end. These big flat brushes, you can still get a fine point, believe it or not, just with the chisel end of them. So here and there, just bring some lines here and there. I'm, I'm doing them a bit random. I'm doing like maybe two, then one, then maybe three. No rhyme or reason. Simple as that, you get a birch tree. Now, I'm gonna outline it a little bit. It's up to you if you like the outlined look or not. I'm going to outline a little bit with the chisel end of my brush. If you're more comfortable, you could do this with a Sharpie later. So uh, whatever you're more comfortable with, a Sharpie or a paint, the Posca paint markers are fabulous. I don't know, has anybody tried those? They are the best. I've tried lots of paint markers, but the Posca ones are amazing. And you know, they have a great supply of them at CC Lowell in Worcester, which is a little art shop that I actually love. It's got a uh, small business, locally owned. They will do anything for you. They'll bring things to your car. They will put little kits together during, uh, right when we first shut down with COVID, I ordered little kits for some of the kids in the family and they, I gave them the age and, and, and the child, you know, what they sort of liked and they put together these amazing little art kits for everyone. I think it's important to keep art in your life. Makes me happy, I think it brings joy. What could be better than that? Well, ice cream maybe, but. So you can see, I am really just eyeballing these. I don't even have my glasses on, which is probably why I'm so wiggly. But um, it doesn't matter. It's personality. These things, um, do a little bit of the tree there. There. I kind of like the way that looks with the outlining. I am going to move this palette, and maybe I could slide this back and forth for you. Are you guys able to see this? Um, let me know and I will try to adjust if not. Hi Maureen, you got my message. I'll bring over your tree, uh, your pieces on um, Monday, I think. I have to go to Marlboro anyways. Hi Karen, thank you guys for watching. Okay, so let me pull this down and you can kind of get a little close up of how those birch trees look. That's that. I'm gonna put the nose on now because I think I can with that green, it's just about dry. Keep your brushes clean. Um, like I said, if I'm going from a light color to a dark color, I will just wipe it off and use it. But if you're not using your brush for a little while, put it, give it a good rinse in the water. If you don't, um, this paint will dry in the ferrules of these brushes and then you will lose your bristles. Even though these are not expensive brushes at all, they will last if you treat them carefully. A little dish soap, Dawn or whatever you have at the sink when you're done painting does wonders. 
if your brushes get all out of shape, you've seen them, they look like that, just run them under hot water or boiling water and it'll bring them right back to shape. All right, our little nose, let's see. Let's see what this orange looks like. <laughs> Might do the trick. I'm not giving you specific um, brands and colors. When I do up the supply list for this, what I usually do is give you like uh, color swatches because it doesn't much matter what color or brand you're using. You can kind of match them up to the color swatches in the supply list. Because whatever you have on hand might work too. All right, so we're gonna do our nose. He's looking up. He's looking up at the sky, it's snowing, the snowflakes falling, so let's just, so how am I gonna do this without tracing him or drawing it? You can certainly sketch it on. Use a piece of chalk or a pencil to get an idea, but I'm gonna wing it. I'm just gonna use a straight line where my nose is gonna go. So I'm gonna probably start up here, straight down. There, that's all I need to start. Just a little curve at the bottom. The green is a little wet, but we're gonna go ahead anyways, just so you can see how we're gonna do this. I am not worrying about exactly, getting it exactly right. We're gonna do a little shading on that after. Sometimes I need to like just brace my hand on my arm just to get a little bit of a straight line. That really helps. And you can see it's a little see-through, like I said it would be, but we'll just go over it again. Sometimes though, if you are on a dark background like that, green, you want to make it a little easier to cover. Sometimes I just take a little white, just so it's kind of a base coat, back to kind of a base coat. And that will just make it so it's a bit brighter when we go again to paint. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit. There. Okay, so we're going to leave that go. When it's dry, we'll do another coat. Little by little, we're getting our little bits and pieces in there. Like I said, I'm going to do some white stripes on my scarf when I'm done, but let's get a, a little quick coat. The red is, red's a tough one. Red's always a little transparent. So is anybody making some handmade gifts for Christmas this year? I always love a handmade gift, something special. So many amazing artists on Etsy, too, with some handmade great uh, little gift ideas actually ordered something adorable not from Etsy but from a little crafter in Ireland that I'm not going to spill the beans because I don't know who's listening but I cannot wait till they come in and when they do after Christmas I will show you these amazing little I'm not telling you what's but okay so while we are here with the red paint again with the chisel end of my brush I'm going to give it some a little fringe just a little can you see what I'm doing there? I think so. Just a little fringe. Afterwards, you can even take, whenever I'm making dots and whatnot, I just use the back end of the brush. This would kind of have a little bit of a little bit of a knot there. Okay, there. When that dries, we'll put some white stripes. I think that'll be very cute. We'll give them some little pink cheeks, which actually, if we just take a little of our white, a little of this red that happens to be on the brush. Why don't we do his little cheeks now since we have that on our brush. You can see I just did a little bit of what, uh, red right into my white and he's going to have some little rosy cheeks because he's out in the cold. These are a bit pink. So what I'm going to do is wipe off my brush and just put a little white on top. I want it to be more like blush, you know, more like it's a little there, more that shade. Anyone a snowman collector here? I have a small collection, which I think that the dogs think that they're dog toys. They're little stuffed, really cute snowmen. One is made of an old chenille bedspread, which is so cool. But I think that the dogs think that they're dog toys. They have not destroyed them yet. They look at them, but they have not taken them. But I do love my snowmen. I love to leave them out after Christmas. I leave them out till about February. Okay, what do you think? Little rosy cheeks. Yeah, that works. And afterwards, we're going to put some snow falling. 
I think he needs some arms though. So let's give him some arms and then we can start painting on the little cardinals as well. For the uh, arms, I'm gonna just use some dark brown. Sometimes my browns need a little bit of black. So there just happens to be black on my palette. I'm gonna mix a little brown in there so I have a nice dark brown. And we need his arms. He, we don't have his whole body here because this is a thin piece of wood. So we don't see his arms out here, but we want his arms, they would come out here probably and come back in. So I want to have it come back in here so that I could sit a little cardinal right on his little stick arm. So the stick arm, we're going to just make some. Now, when I mentioned to you about the chisel end of the brush, it's a good, great way to get like a pointed end. You do not, you always wanna say you're doing a tree. You wanna go in the direction the tree grows. You want to start a little heavier, press your brush down and lift and you get a nice point. I'm not sure you could see that, so I'm gonna do it real close here for you. So say you just, a little pressure on your brush, pull it up right off the surface and you've got a nice little point. Makes great branches. So that's one of his little arms. I don't know if we need two. I think we need one just to sit the bird on. We'll put a bird on his hat. You can put as many little birds as you would like, but I'm gonna put one here and one on his hat. And I got a little smudge here, so let me just get rid of that orange smudge. I will step back after, and if I think that we need a little more, um, a little more white on this guy, I'll just kind of lightly add it. What I'm going to do now is just cover up my little smudge there while I had some orange. But maybe just a little, I think on the edge of his face here, it's a little gray. It's kind of, it's kind of, there. All right. Let's just work on some cardinals. Again, I'm freehanding them. Don't get nervous if you want to do one of these signs. I can give you some tracers, but watch how easy this is going to be. These are just little folk art, whimsy birds. They don't have to be exactly, and you know, actually look exactly like a real card. We're going to use red. You know it's going to be a little translucent, so we'll just do it once, and we will add another coat. So my little bird. Here's a good way to start a little bird. It's going to look like a little teardrop on its side, really. We are just going to... Can you see me there? Kind of? Yeah. Uh, just look at that, like a little teardrop shape. Easy peasy. Cardinals. We're gonna do this little round head. So this little this this shape right here we just done. Did done good. Could be any bird, depending on the colors. You could make him the robin, you could make him a bluebird. But the thing that's gonna set our little cardinal apart is he has this little crowny thing here. So I just came out and made this little pointy bit on the back of his head. And he also has a tail. So his tail feathers, I'm just gonna Press and pull in three times, tail. A lot of you people might remember our little other uh, canvas painting. We did lots of these guys. Same thing up top. I'm going to just do a little teardrop on its side. So it's really just two curved strokes. Fill it in. Side's a little bit of a point. This guy's going to be a little chubster. He's going to be chubby, this one. And they're all unique, and that's what makes them fun and interesting. He's got his little round head, and then I just give him a little curve up here, a little point. We're gonna let that dry. We'll give him feet, legs, little beaks, the whole nine yards. But I do want him to dry first. Oh, you know what? Look at, did I do his little tail feathers? One, two, three, easy. So like I said earlier, it's been fun to paint the ceramics, but I miss the signs. So uh, I don't know if any of you have been to my stenciling classes. Lots of times on the wooden boards we stencil. I thought it would be fun to do some painting freehand and stenciling. So this one, I'll show you the technique at the end um, of putting the stencil on. If you would like to paint one of these, I have the boards for you. I have the, I'll have cut the stencil, I'll have the paints and a few brushes, everything you need, like I said. I will, uh, if you know you want one, I have 10, and they're 65 for the whole kit, everything you need. Just mark sold in the comments and your email address. And if not, just come back anytime. When I'm done, I'm gonna uh, 
put in the description a little link of where you can purchase it as well if there's some left okay so we're letting that dry this guy let's, let's work on his hat a little bit i want to shade a little bit on the edges and give it a little bit of an outline roughly like we did on the birch trees i'm just going to use a darker green to shade uh, i think this one here it's kind of a blue green and notice my supplies i'm not getting very fancy these um look like the little meat styrofoam trays i get them at the dollar store they're actually new ones they're not the uh, ones from the meat trays but i also use paper plates or any kind of little thing you have around the house i just use a solo cup for my water the brushes are not real expensive but like i said if you take care of them they will last you so you can get yourself some supplies pretty reasonably it's not uh it's not an expensive hobby so i want to just kind of shade behind where the brim of his hat is I want to shade on the sides. So what I'm doing is with my flat brush, I'm just going to go down the side. And then kind of like we did with the birch trees, I am just bringing from the edge of the hat in, just sort of feathering that dark color. Same thing over here. I'm just going to go down the, down the side. And in. I've got some little kits. I don't know if you had seen them when I put them on. I have some kids painting kits. So if the kids are looking for something to do over vacation or whatnot, I've got some wood cutouts that are adorable. I did the llama and the shark. I have also a mermaid and a robot. I have to paint the samples, but I do have the others. I have a little time-lapse video. So if you purchase the kit for those, it's the wood piece, the paints, brushes, palette, everything for the kids need with the little QR. Everything, everything you buy comes with a QR code. And a photo and on the qr code it will link you right back to this video and the supply list so keep that in mind if if you are are painting you can always get back to the video there so that is some shading for the hat i'm going to outline and afterwards we're going to add little bits of snow to things but let's wait on that let's just get this outlined a little bit if you're more comfortable you can certainly outline with a round brush it's a little, uh, this one's probably a six, five round. Nice little end, so you can do your line work with that as well. A tip for your line work is to water your paint down a little bit. I add a few drops when I'm doing line work. It just makes the paint flow a little easier for you and it doesn't drag along. Keeps the paint a little thinner. All right, so just like we did on the birch tree, I'm, and it's not fancy and I'm not being very careful, I'm just gonna outline a little bit. paint when I need it. What do you think so far? Like this guy? I love a snowman anyway. And this big guy would be, really make a statement on your porch. Actually, it would make a great gift too. It would impress your friends with your artistic abilities. So that's that. Probably going to outline him best I can too. So why don't we just do this while we're here? I think that this is dry enough. We can do this. Paint's getting a little thick there, but if I water down my black a little, but I don't mind it. And the nose will be outlined, so why not do that now? And then we'll just put a little more orange on the inside when we get a second. And like I said, if you want a thinner line, feel free to use the liner brush. Because this guy is going to be on the porch, and he's going to be far away, I think it's nice to have the big bold lines on him. But you could do it any way you like. Just clean up those little bits there. You can see that if the paint's still wet, I just put clean water on my brush and I wipe up any little bits and pieces that need to be corrected. That needs to be a little more orange. So I've got a dark orange here and a light. I'm going to just put a little bit in the middle. We're going to shade it still a little bit after, but let's just get him some more orange on that nose. There. You can kind of see how I plan a little bit 
with the jumping back and forth. Just when I see something dry, I'll put the second coat on and then move on. I see that these birds are dry. I definitely need a second coat, especially with this guy's on the white and on the dark. He'll need a few coats to cover up the black behind. But my little trick from before, add a little white. I know he looks pink, but he will become red again. But that helps just to cover the black that's underneath. Actually add some nice highlighting when we're done. Okay, this guy can be done. I'm going to a darker color, so I don't need to wash my brush. I'm just wiping off the paint and going into the red. And you can see the shape again, how we did the circle for his head. And then there's just this little curvy bit for his little tuft there. He'll be he'll come alive when he gets an eye. Um, okay. I think I'm going to switch over to my round brush for now. And hi Beth, hi Kelly, hi Lisa. Thank you guys for watching. So he gets a little. Uh, you know what? I'm going to. I'm not crazy about the little coal bits for the mouth. We'll do that for his buttons. But I'm really like. I kind of like just to give him a little smiley face. So there's his little smile. I give him these little laugh lines here. But on the buttons here, we just want to kind of see where the meadow would be. We don't need too many, maybe three. So we'll give you one. And I can do this better sitting down. And I can see you guys. Black paint. So look for, if I don't get it done tonight, I will do it in the morning. I'll get the supply list out for you. You may have lots of paints and things at home. And I'm going to leave that as it is for there for now because this is all on top and it's a little busy as it is. And you might want to give this a try. Like I said, I have the kits, but if you you could go to Home Depot and get the wood. You might have paints already. If you have any trouble getting part of the supplies, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. I know right now paints are in a shortage, really, with uh, Michael's has very little. I found a good selection at Joann's, though, or online. So let's put some stripes on here. This is just his scarf. I'm loading my brush each time. I, I'm using this uh, number five round, but can you see how I'm pressing it down to get that wider line? As I get to the side, you can even curve it a little bit, give it some dimension. Over here is where that little knot is in his scarf. So we're gonna do this, and when we outline it after, it will make sense. It is a good diet. It is a good idea to load fresh white on after each stroke. It might be a little wet there. If it starts getting pink, we'll just wait a minute. But let's do this side. You can see when I don't get the fresh paint, I do get that pink. Sometimes I'm a little impatient and want to just keep painting. You can have a um, hair dryer standing by. Because if you want to, you can just give it a zap with that. Oh, look at the big smudge I made. Um, and then just give it a, a touch of the hair dryer and you can, you know, work a little faster. And you can certainly fix any mistakes as I'm proving right now. The paint is wet. You can usually wipe it up with clear water, uh, clean water. If it's dried, you can use alcohol. Alcohol will remove dried paint. So that's handy to know if you get it on some surfaces or in your clothes or something. You can... Okay, so I'm going to leave that. It's going to be pink, but we'll just go over it with some white, and we'll smudge that up. See? Everybody makes mistakes. Okay, let me get a paper towel here. Uh, uh, uh. There. I will touch this little red thing up, and then I'm going to... That's a little wet. I'm going to wait for the rest of the stripes, but you get the idea. That's where the stripes will go. I will pop them in when I see that that's dry. I want to fix my little... Actually, with the round brush, you can get some really nice little fringy bits, too. So you might want to use that, too. Okay. While I'm here, let's see. Let's see this bird is dry. Almost. Not quite, but almost. 
we can give with my liner brush just a little little highlights these little white fun highlights on his hat and we'll go back to his nose now because take a little of the brown that we have out again there's not many colors here we've used white gray black but you could make your gray of course with some a little bit of black added to your white i'm just noticing that we have this little bit of a tree here that we didn't address so we're just going to do that right now um some orange some brown the colors that you need for your hat and scarf which i chose the red and the green but again i think a, the teal would be fun or blue you can pick any color you like but i'm taking a little of this brown that we have already and i want to just give a shadow on the sides of the nose i'm trying to do this so you can kind of see at the same time but little dimension right to the and then we'll add a little of these little white lines but just a little dimension there okay let that go that's not dry yet we'll leave that for a second and I think I am going to do the details on this bird so you can see what is involved there this is drying nicely for the stencil that we're going to add I'll show you a little trick that we use a lot with our um, canvas painting is to sprinkle the snow on here with uh, a toothbrush. Hey, Glenn, or Crystal, or both. I will have your trees over to Marlboro too. I think it'll have to be Monday now, um, so after Thanksgiving. So also glitter. I do have a little bit of glitter. You can always use glitter if you're a glitter fan. Okay, so let's get a little bit of this black paint here. These are just going to be his little legs. Nothing fancy. He's just got little legs. I think I'll give him some little toes to hold him on to the branch. The cardinals get this little triangle on their face. It makes them a cardinal. Again, if you want this just to be a different bird, you would not have to do this on there. But he gets that and a little beak. So we're just going to put a little beak on him. When that dries, we'll just put a little tiny dot of white for his eye. If you want to add a little whimsical touch, you could paint a little side, a little heart on its side for his wing. It's kind of cute. If you want, just that little whimsical touch is kind of cute. Again, you could paint as many birds if you love the birds. Wouldn't it be cute, actually, if you had one here and a little one on top, one down at the bottom? You could put them all over the place. But that's what I've got there for now. He's going to get an eye in a minute waiting for this to dry and that and I think what I'm going to do is work on the stencil here so you guys can see how I put a stencil on I'm going to touch that white up because that's going to drive me crazy so let me just put a little paint on there and then I'm going to pre prepare that area for the stencil we don't need a pink snowman Any questions, try to throw them in the comments, and I'm going to see if I can bring that up on my computer at the same time, and we can if you have some questions I can answer. And if not, like I said, I'll look at the comments afterwards and address anything that you have a question about. Okay. Let me get a look at this little bird here. I'm going to throw some red on him before I do the stencil, I think, just because he's looking very pink. But like I said, the white doesn't bother me so much with little bits of it showing. Because I like that look. Like the little white bits we put on the hat. And he is going to be the little chubby one. Okay. Now, he'll dry, then we'll add his legs and his beak and all that other business. I'm going to lightly sand this area just a little tiny bit. Just so it's smooth for the stencil. And we'll paint, actually we'll paint some snowmen on, uh, snowflakes afterwards. Stencil for the snowflakes. I think they're pretty easy um, to paint. So I'll show you a quick little method for that. I'm wiping off any dust there might be. And I just print up a stencil on my Cricut. You could probably get a stencil online um, or at a craft shop that might say, I'm doing baby, it's cold outside. You could put anything you want on that. Hello, I'm over here on the edge. But I do cut them out on my Cricut. So if you want and you're ordering the whole kit, um, it will have a stencil for you. 
You could also have it say something else if you wanted it welcome to the Smith family or you can use your imagination. So I have cut this out with my Cricut. Those of you who have been to my stencil classes are familiar with the process, but I'm gonna go over it now because it might not be. I've cut the stencil out for you. It has a little piece of transfer, contact paper. And I am just gonna peel that off. Now, if you're at home doing this, don't just take the backing and peel it off like that because you're gonna lose some little bits of your letters. I do it pretty carefully. I get one whole edge free and then I put it right back on itself and peel it off like this. The reason being, the middle of these little letters lots of times wanna pop off. So as I'm going, if I see a little bit of blue coming up, I just press it back down. So that's why I want you to peel this off carefully, slowly, and if you lose a little bit, like it starts to come up, press it. See those little bits are coming up? Press it down, press it down, and then just peel it back. There, and this reveals your stencil. So this is just the backing paper, you can toss that away. And the back is sticky, so you're gonna get a nice contact and a nice, usually a nice crisp line with your stenciling. I'm going to just lightly center it before I stick it down. Um, I think I want it towards the bottom. What I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at my lettering and I'm just looking right to left and I'm eyeballing where it's gonna go. I'm not really worried about measuring. I am just, is there the same amount of space there as here? Kind of making sure it's straight. It, like I said, it's sticky now. Then you would just take a credit card or something like that to use as a squeegee. And now I am just gonna make sure that is adhered well before I remove this top piece of contact paper. That's really just a carrier sheet for us to get the stencil to the wood. Now, what's different about these stencils here, they're unused stencils, but because of that, you don't have that stencil look of all get a nice, nice look. So anyways, I have squeegeed that down best I can. I'm gonna carefully peel off this contact paper that's on the top, just like we did with the backing paper. You don't wanna just rip it up and out. Peel it back on itself, going slow and carefully, so that if you lose, cause you will, some of the bits of letters will pop up. But if you go this way, pulling it right back on itself, you're less likely to lose those bits. And if it starts to come up, you can press them right down. So you're gonna see how this works now. This is just um, the contact paper, which we can just get rid of. And it's adhered down here. You've got a nice contact. I look at it. I make sure that there's no gaps or air bubbles around the letters. If there's a gap or air bubble out here, that does not matter. You just wanna make sure you've got a nice um, smooth contact there. Okay, so there's your stencil. And all you do is with a little stencil brush or a foam brush or one of those little makeup sponges or even your brush, you could use your brush and dab, and, and dab it on there. I wanna get a clean palette, so let me grab that. I don't wanna use a lot of paint. You wanna take some of your paint and really tap it off. You don't wanna go with a big glob of paint here, too thick. When you peel the backing off, you're gonna take your letter with you. Hey, Bev. I know, he's awfully cute. We should name him. Think of some names. Um, hey, what's doing up in Canada? Miss you guys. Hopefully we'll see you next summer. If we can get uh, Maine to open up to everyone. Okay, so a little bit of um, black paint, my sponge brush, I'm just tapping. I'm not doing it thickly. I'm not doing a second coat. Less is more. You'll have less problems if you do just a little light coat. Use as much of that paint up as you can. Really you know, spread that out. When you need more, just grab a little. There's hardly any paint here. When I take some from the little container, I really smush it off, most of it, most of it off there. And that is how difficult that is, right? How easy is this? You could use a different color. I wanted black, I really want it to be seen. It's on the porch, people see it from the road. Um, I like to, to use a dark color, but you could use red or green or, or anything you wanted. You could go in after and outline some of the letters if you wanted to. It's completely your choice. And what is the, the best part of all this is seeing everybody's techniques and how they personalize it and made it their own. I don't know about you guys, but I just love my time painting and creating. Really helps during these crazy times we're going through. I am finding lots of people who perhaps haven't even painted before wanting to do crafts and learn to paint. And it's really not hard, guys. 
a lot of most of what I do is step by step. I'll show you every step of the way, little by little. And it's just a fun way to get together virtually or with a small group or friends and family over the holidays. It'd be fun to have a little memento and a little memory of this crazy 2020. I was looking forward to New Year's and getting into 21. I never wished away a year before so, like this because I hate to wish time away. I, I love to savor every minute, but uh, it's been trying. Okay, so this has got to dry before we peel that off. So I will show you how that works, but let's just let that dry now. This is side in some water. We'll go back and do our little bird up top. We'll finish this guy down. You can see it's been really a long project. I'm sort of taking my time, but... Um, don't take too long. Let's uh, give him his little triangular face, whatever that is, a little bit on his face. The black is great. The black covers pretty easily. We don't have to do second coats on that. And a little beak. And little feet, a little legs. There we are. We've got those little legs. I love the little wing shaped like a little heart sideways. Again, you can do it any which way you like. I think I'm gonna just put a tiny bit more red on him. He's looking a little pinky still. I'm using the round brushes because it's in my hand. One little bit down here, and let's give them some eyes. Again, doing, doing dots or eyes or polka dots and whatnot, I use the back end of my brush. If you have a big polka dot, you could use a wider brush with the flatter end. But just a little white on my brush, a little eyeball there. I'm actually, you know what I think I'll do? Instead of having a big white eye, I'm making a big white circle, but I'm going to make a little black circle inside. It looks a little more lifelike than just a white, it looks a little zombie-ish with just a white eye. So let's do that and we'll put black inside after. A little nose, just some little highlights like these guys here. I'm going in from the left side. I'm going to give his little cheeks a little comma stroke. And let's go back and give some more stripes to this. Again, press. You get a little wide stripe if you press. I think it would be fun to have polka dots on your scarf. Um, you could do little hearts. You could do plaid. Wouldn't the buffalo plaid be cool? Black and white we've got up here. Buffalo plaid is still the rage, it appears. You know, I can't believe I'm painting this entire thing without my glasses on, which is crazy because I really can't see without. Okay. What do you think? What do you, what do you guys think? Do you like this um, snowman porch leaner? Hi, Christine. Christine's my cousin. And Christine, put your link in the comments for your embroidery business because my cousin does some amazing embroidery um, pieces. It's Christine's custom stitch in Natick. We painted trees. The cousin, the girl cousins painted trees with my aunt this weekend, and that was so much fun. Any little bit of normalcy helps these days. Let's give a little white comma to your buttons. Any suggestions? Anything you think he needs? What do you think, you guys? Thank you, Denise. I love him too. He needs a name. Anybody got some suggestions for a name? Noel? That's Christmassy. Okay, we're letting this dry. That's drying. Oh, I think I'll outline my scarf a little bit. I do like the way the outlining looks. So what do we do? We add a little water to our paint, thin that black down. I am gonna go ahead with, you know what? I think I'll wear my glasses and I think I will use the round brush. So let's just kind of outline this guy, this guy's scarf. I make a mess when I paint, as you can see but I'm just not very neat. And when I'm creating, I'm just kind of, everything goes. This has a little bit of a knot there, which I overshot. So I'm gonna get rid of that little bit of white afterwards. There's still some wet bits. So I'm kind of putting my um, hand in some of the wet paint. If you were doing this on your own, you might not go along at such a speedy clip. You would probably let things dry in between. How would you secure him so he doesn't blow away? Oh, Glenn, you know what I would probably do is put like a, like a eye hook that screws in in the back. You can get them at Abishan's, the little bigger ones. I probably would put that eye hook in the back. You could either then take a little piece of wire and 
tie him to something or put two eye hooks with the wire and secure him somehow um, to something. Sorry, my light's kind of blinking. Secure him to something there because you're right. You would not want him, after all your hard work, you would not want him to blow away. So speaking of, oops, stop blinking, Christmas, Glenn, or maybe, is it Crystal watching too? Crystal is my niece and she was born on Christmas Day. And her brother Christopher was born 10 years later, you guessed it, on Christmas Day. We have two Christmas babies in the family. And there, what do you think? Do you guys like the outlining or would you like it plain? Crystal is very artistic. She has her YouTube channel. Glenn or Crystal, if you're watching, put that in the um, comments so people can take a look. Oh, and there's something else I did want to show you, too. I have here my kind of cool. So can you see? I'm just kind of making the little, you know, the little knots that would be with the fringe here. You can um, do a little of this. This is the fun part. You could just add little bits of whatever you like. I am going to see if I can get a little eye on him now. It's still wet, but it worked. So there, little dot of black inside that white zombie eye. Uh, I've got, I've dragged more red paint down here. So let's add a little white. You can see there's always, what's great about acrylic paint is you could touch up anything. If you didn't like the scar, you could paint the whole thing over again. If you don't like a certain thing, paint it over. It's not, um... It's not set in stone. It's really cool that you can fix things. I want to fix right now this little bit of white I left here. There. That was going to bug me. And this little guy here. Let's just touch. Yeah, so everything can be fixed. Still, this is actually the paint for the stencil is dry. What is wet and shiny is what's on the plastic part of the stencil, but just so we don't make I'm gonna let it dry a little more, but I am going to show you how to paint some snowflakes if you would like. Um, and because this is kind of grayish, he needs eyes, I think. Ah, uh, yes, he needs eyes. How do we, how do we forget that? Let's see. He's looking up. So let's just do some pretty simple little curved eyes. How easy is that? You guys could do that without even tracing it on. So I have done this completely freehand and showed you along the way how. It's very easy, but again, if you are comfortable, uh, uh, not comfortable with that, we could certainly do a tracer for you. Uh, since we've outlined everything, I'm giving these guys a little quick outline. You can see I'm not going around every little bit. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of black to them. Mix them pop. Anybody thought of a name for this guy yet? Come on, some suggestions. It pops with the outlining. I think so too, Denise. I really do, I, I kind of like it. Okay, now some snowflakes. Okay, I think I popped up some snowflake pictures on my computer here, so I am going to see where those live and uh, some ideas. I do like the idea of a stencil, but I'm trying to keep it down so that there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of things or, or supplies that you need. Here we go, snowflakes. I could do them in my sleep. I don't know why I'm looking it up, but you can certainly Google anything, find an image, and go to town. Okay, I'm going to use my round brush for this, and I'm using the same. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? Jimmy owns Hillcrest Apiary, which is in the market, my next door neighbor, and sells all his own local honey. Um, his hives are in Sturbridge and uh, in Southbridge and Sturbridge at Old Sturbridge Village. And he has a lot of cool bee gifty items too. Okay, while I'm right here, let's paint a snowflake. I don't know if they're exactly like a real snowflake, but what I do is I kind of do a line, a line, so it's kind of a cross see that but again I'll put some up pictures afterwards um, and then I put some lines through there and then I add just embellishments little dots I'm fairly thick I really want it to show up I'm not worrying about it being too globby or anything lines 
just for the illusion of a snowflake. Let's do one here, which is kind of on my little red, red area and on this gray, but again, just and if you'd like, and if you happen to have a stencil for a snowflake, that works too. Maybe in the supply list, I'll do some little drawings of them and you could copy them or trace them on. Uh, let's see. Can you really see it? I've got about 14 cords under here. Don't tell the electrical uh, department. That's why the light is flickering. But let's do it on the hat, because I think maybe if I do it on the hat, you could probably see it a little better. I just do across, and then smudging because this paint is still wet. And then something like a little cross in the middle. These guys a lot of times have this sort of a V on the end. And then sometimes a little cross here. Sometimes I just do little dots. Something like that. No one's gonna look at it and say, oh, a real snowflake only has this many arms and whatnot, because I know I do them differently than what they should be. But I'm gonna do another one up here, smaller. Cross, cross, little Vs. And I apologize that I'm so far away down here. This guy is a big project. Sometimes I put dots on the end. There. Now, you can also do snowflakes just like this. You could do some that are just dots, which is a good time to use the back end of your brush and just here and there, right? Those look nice mixed in. Some can go right on top of the trees. Some can go right on, because if it's snowing, the snow is on your snowman. So these little dots, which I'm just dipping the back end of my brush into my white paint and scattering them around. Fun part will be the little snow spatters we do with a toothbrush. So, so you saw a little demo kind of on the um, snowflakes. Why don't I do one close up for you on something? Let's see, maybe on the back of this, just because it was so far when you were looking. So what I do is, just across, and then I just do a cross in the middle. I put little V's on the end, and you can embellish them a multitude of ways. And of course, look, that's too long, it's not perfect, so don't, I don't wanna hear like, oh, it's not perfect, it doesn't look like yours, it's not look like a real snowflake, it doesn't look like my neighbor's snowflake. Just have fun with it. You can do these little guys. You can pop dots on there, you know. This is just rough and ready, but you know, just a just a little whimsical snowflake. Easy. Now let's peel off our stencil and then I'll show you the spattering of the snow. And I think this guy is pretty much done. This is the sticky um, stencil part. It peels right up. Can you see? Hey Tara, look at look at what look Kristen did an amazing job with my hair today. Hi Anne. I can't wait to see you guys. Hey, Crystal, right? Not all snowflakes are perfect. That's what makes them special. This just peels off. It leaves the little bits of pieces behind. So what I take is, and I'll include one of these in the kits if you, if you need to. It's, you can use any little uh, metal bit, but look at, I use these little seam rippers. Everybody remember those from sewing and home economics class? Anyways, okay, so you can kind of look at this closely. You mightn't see it from there, um, but I'm just going to peel up the little bits of stencil that are in the middle of these letters. You can see it's going to start coming alive now. You will see where these are if you're as close as I am to this. You mightn't, mightn't see them there. All right, so these come up. This paint is all dry now. Isn't that a lot easier than hand lettering? Although if you want to hand letter, here's a little trick. If you're doing a painting project and you want some nice lettering, print it out, get into one of your word processing programs, print out, use your font you like, blah, blah, blah. Print out your lettering on your computer paper. And then you can just rub the backside with graphite with a pencil and you can transfer it onto your, onto your project and then just paint it in with your little round brush. Okay, so there, maybe it's cold outside. It looks like I am missing an apostrophe. Let's do that, add that in. 
Does it need anything else besides snow, you guys? What do you think? I, I look at this. I'm like right on top of here. Look, you need to look at my nose. I'll go over here and say that. Anything else anyone thinks it needs? Let me know. I can add it. Um, I think I would add some glitter, maybe. Not the glitter that flies all over your house, but there's some cool glitter glues. Um, Deco Art makes a, one called Twinkles. I tried. I bought some Mod Podge glitter glue today. I'm not sure how that works, but it would be kind of fun. But here's a really fun part. I just take a toothbrush. Um, I water down, which is this disgusting water here, some of my white paint. Let's get some place to mix this. So I take some of my white acrylic paint, and I want it a little waterier. So I add just a just a tiny bit of water, and voila, snow. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's going to spatter little snowflakes on my project. I love this as a finishing touch of my snowman paintings, my winter paintings. Um, if you don't have an old toothbrush, but who doesn't? Um, from your dentist and whatnot, getting all those toothbrushes. You could use any sort of a stiff bristle brush. And I'll try to hold this up for you. So I like the idea of the big painted snowflakes, which I think I'll go and put one here. Um, the little dotted snowflakes, and then you've got this with the spattering. And I like to put it over my writing as well. So there's that. Let's add a snowflake here. It could be done then. A little glitter maybe. If you wanted to, you could take your paint. I'm not going to do this because that would be here for a while with you guys. You could take your red paint, would be nice, and just kind of on the left side of each letter. Wouldn't that look cool? Like a little outlining. And I was doing a snowflake. Okay, so just a little one. Just because there's a bit of a gray area there. Yeah, I just smudged my apostrophe. Does it matter? No, it does not matter. Again, I wish I had some Christmas music playing. I hope you guys have some playing. Put your Hallmark movie on and your hot chocolate, or even better, a glass of sangria, maybe? Hey, Kim. Well, I don't think he's perfect, but he is fun. You can sign your name. Um, you can put a little message on the back and give it to as a gift for someone. So let me see. It's going to be, if I can put it up a little closer so you can see it a little better. So there you go. There's the baby. It's cold outside. And you understand now why I like to have him a little bit more gray than perfectly white, because then your snowflakes wouldn't show up. Um, and then he would just be really flat and cold. Look at the dimension he has just by me scraggly putting on some white paint, not really being careful. Here's his face. Um, and a little bit close up of that chubby bird and the snowflakes. And he's a big porch leaner, so you could really picture him on your porch. He's five feet tall. I would probably spray him with an, a, a poly um, finish, a spray finish, or a poly brush on, uh, just to protect him out in the elements. And I have, like I said, I have 10 kits. So if you want to paint one of these, let me know in the comments. Just uh, give, tell me you want one or say sold and put your email address and I will get uh, an invoice to you. So it's $65, the wood piece, the paints, the stencil, brushes, a little seam ripper to take your stencil off, anything that you might need. And I'm, I might try glitter on him. I'll show you what it looks like. I'm not gonna add it now, but it's just twinkles. It's like, like a glue, a clear glue, and it has glitter in it. So it's not the glitter that's gonna fly around your house and live with you forever more. Um, sell your snowman, and you can paint one. But um, I would paint you one, of course, if you wanted to. And the chubby bird is cute, Crystal, I think so too. So anyways, I've kept you long enough. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it once again. Um, happy Thanksgiving. And I will see you next time. I don't know what we're going to paint, but something fun. Okay? So, listen. Good night. Have a great Thanksgiving. Love you guys. Bye.